Hello, hello, hello again, Dr. Bo, while you're talking about different subjects and topics. Remember, guys, that uh, these articles are published at Harvard University Medical School. This official website that you can also visit is magazine.hms.harvard.edu. Today we are going to be talking about the isolation of social media. Social media should promote conversation and exchange. Though the United States of America accounts for only about 4% of the global population, it leads the world in COVID-19 cases and death. And among high-income countries, it's been only Russia in the scene opposition. Studies find that anywhere from 8 to 22 percentage of the population remains unwilling to get help, despite the reams of data and anecdotal evidence showing that jobs are overwhelming, safe, and effective. Early in the pandemic, this heritage could have been badly account for the facts that denial and superstition are typical human response to black. According to the Dr. Nicholas Christates, director of the Human Natural Lab at Yale University and co-director of Yale Institute for Network Science. But a large effort comes from the ways in which behaviors, attitudes, and emotions spread among members of a group, moving as fast as and often as virulently as any biological pathogen. In 2021, a study by the Center for Cutting Digital Hate, an international non-profit that works to stop online hate and misinformation, showed that two-thirds of content opposition vaccines and vaccination share on Facebook and Twitter origin from just 12 people, which is in keeping with research. Dr. Chris has done on how information advances through time and space. A very deep and fundamental principle of human social network is that they magnify whatever they are sit with. That's what Dr. Chris says. They don't give rise to things, but once you put something into the network, the network will make more of it. If you put Nazis into networks, you get more Nazis. If you put love into the network, you get more love. If you put anti-vaccination sentiments into the networks, what's gonna happen? Social scientists first populate the relationship matter to an individual health in the late 1800s, but it wasn't until 2009 that the all-encompassing efforts of relationship enters the public consensus as a result of Christie's book, Connect writing with James Follower, a political scientist at the University of California, San Diego. In it, the author of the book shows how people you don't even know influence nearly every aspect of your life, from behaviors like smoking, drinking, boring, comparing, and divorce, to conditions like obesity, to attitudes like happiness or vaccinate acceptance. If your friends are obese, your risk of obesity is higher. Dr. Chris explains in 2010 in the TED Talk, if your friends, friends are obese, your risk of obesity is 25% higher. If only when you get to your friends, 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 he continues that there no longer a relationship between the person body size and your own body size. This is amazing to be talking about these subjects because this is a genius. I think all the Harvard University professors and students and all these uh, articles has been wrote for really genius people. All right, so we continue here talking and chatting with Dr. Wawile and with all of you. This association could be due to homophily 
in which birds of a feeder flock together, so to speak, or too confounding, in which you and your friends' friends might share a common exposure to, say, a new pizza place down the street. A key effect, however, comes from induction in which great gain becomes a norm. Is simple, more acceptable with the group. We found that if your friend becomes obese, it increases your risk of obesity by about 57 percentage in the same given time period. Dr. Chris said, recognizing some of the possible ramifications of these findings, Dr. Chris points out it could be a mission of a findings to justice produce against people with larger body sizes. The more Dr. Chris and Dr. Fowler study social networks, the more they came to see them as living things independent of the individuals who comprise them. This network does change across time as memory. Dr. Chris says in the tech talk, it moves things flow within it, it has a kind of consisting. People can die, but it doesn't die. It has a kind of resilience that allows it to persist across time. In the 1960s, the Harvard social psychologist Stanley Milgram showed that we are each separate by an average of six connections from everyone else in the world. To that proposition, which inspired the 1990s place six degrees of separation and the 1993 film of the same name, Dr. Chris and Dr. Fowler add the finding signs replicate many times over that we each have three degrees of influence on our friends, their friends, and their friends' friends. Human brains are designed to function in concert with other humans' brains, says I. Corbin, an HMS research fellow in neurologic at Brigham and Women's Hospital, co-director of the Hospital Human Network Initiate, an interdisciplinary research center and senior fellow at Capita at Think Tank. That is our optimal form of cognition, and if you pull us out of social context of intersubjective feedback loops, our brains have to work harder. Behaviors require a complicated mix of dense styles that are designed to reinforce, share, acknowledge, and practice, but also loose ties that allows access to dissimilar acknowledge. Amardan, medical doctor from the Massachusetts Hospital, associate professor of neurology and Corbin's co-director, explains how this came about. For millions of years, when populations numbers were low, how many brains were really still larger until around the Neolithic period in the Stone Age when complex society begins to emerge. The O'Neillic human's brain strand compared to its evolutionary ancestors, while perhaps becoming more sophisticated internally to maintain cognitive capacity. Dr. Dan says, adding that the metabolisms and energy that might have been required by a large brain could then be relocated to endurance and other adaptive function. Neolithic humans had to be hyper aware of three because they were in very small groups or maybe alone in the world most of the time, which would create an incredible stress response. He says the fact that 
you could now be interdependent and really on friends to be watching for threats, you would reduce your cortisol level and contribute to an increased lifespan for the next step on the evolutionary tree. Well, I know that many of you will be asking me what kind of articles you can find at Harvard Magazine. Yes, you can go into magazine.hms.harvard.edu and you will see different topics. What topics? Research, community, education, care delivery, hours, and achievements. You know, it's very accomplished and very beautiful what all these professors and all these genius from Harvard University has grown for all of us. Alright, so I hope you really research all this information at magazine of Harvard University. We continue talking about this article. Social networking also frees up energy previously devoted to cognition. If you are a trash copper side of mine, Dr. Covey says, then my brain has to do less work than if I have to arrive a solution by myself. And it allows for behaviors that can be understood only by studying the collective. Dr. Chris points out as when a kind of beast finds a new next inside of a school to fish he face of predator. Example, like this. He says, require a complicated mix of dense ties that are designed or to reinforce share acknowledge and practice, but also loose ties that allows access to dissimilar knowledge. The ability to explore your environment is enhanced by your close ties. But what happens when the well does dry and no one among us knows where new water is to be found? There has to be trade-off between intensity and novelty, and networks have optimized that. A reality is a social reality. Writes J. Van Babel is a professor associate of psychology and neural science at New York University. He titled his book The Power of Us and is co author with Dominic Parker, a professor of psychology at Lay University. And they ask, but how do individuals come to identify with the thinking of a particular group? That's a big question, right, for all of us. Children develop their understanding on how they roll in a feedback loop with their caregivers, Corbin says, staying in bed with people who share your assumption in the easiest and most comfortable thing. Sometimes this began to change when you start to see the world and have other experience. You might look around and be like, I think my parents and their community are missing some stuff. My friends at school seems to get it. That's when you may break off and go into other groups. Not only do your circumstances appear, but your foundational friendships affect that you believe. But thanks to magnetic resonance, imagine scientists now know how your brain structure may play a role. While correlating doesn't necessarily equal causation, we know the environment can help shape brain structures. A 2013 book, Predispose, that's the title, Predispose, which investigates how people develop their political predisposition, discussed at current biology paper by scientists at University College London. Using a structured MRI to view brain activity in young 
adult participants. The research found that the volume of the amygdala associated with the five or five responses and encoding emotional memories tend to be greater in people with conservative views, while the gray matter volume in the anterior cingulate cortex associated with empathy related response and resolving emotions conflict is greater in those who views are more liberal. Whatever the answer to the chicken and egg question may be, social media exploring of this opposite biological response underlies, at least in part, the political polarization in the United States of America and other parts of the world. For many people, the polarization has become extreme enough to warrant the level culturally. Cortin maintains with extreme belief existing on both ends of the political spectrum. Well, I have something else to say before we finish this episode. Uh, remember, guys, that uh, it's very important for you to be understanding every word, everything that I'm reading and I'm telling everybody about this beautiful article. All right. So remember, guys, that human's brain are designed to function in concert with other human's brain. That is our optimal form of condition. And people care a lot about social regards. If they could gain a status but being a cure, they be more likely to share based on that. All right, guys, remember that you can download this episode from Dr. Go Wild Podcast, from a Spotify platform, and from Google Podcast. It has been a pleasure for me talking about this beautiful article about the isolation of social media published for Harvard University at the magazine of Harvard Medical School. I will see you in my next episode. Bye-bye.